Hey, thanks so much for joining me for 10 things I never do that help my makeup look better. Before I start, if you do any of these things and you love the way your makeup looks, keep doing it. This is just my personal taste, things that I've learned about my own face and based on the shape of my face and the texture of my skin, all those different factors, those things may work for you, but they don't work for me as we can see. This is a side of things that I never do. Yeah, I never do these things. And then this is a side of things that I typically do. So this is in response to your request for 10 more things. So thank you for joining me for 10 things I always do to help my makeup look better. So I thought I'd do 10 more and just word it differently. If this really is 10 more things I do that always help my makeup look better, but it's also 10 things I never do that help my makeup look better. So we'll talk about this application and then we'll Gosh, we'll try to fix it. I don't know if we're gonna be successful this time, but let's go ahead to the demo. Starting off with a never that is a literal never because I never go outside of the house without SPF during the day. So I've had questions about how do I layer primer with SPF and I typically will use SPF as my primer. So this one's really nice. Um, I just don't love the packaging. The Tatcha. The Silk Sunscreen Hydrating Mineral Shield SPF 50. And if you do want to use a primer in addition, I've been told that sunscreen is always the last step. So primer and then sunscreen. I've done it before, but typically my sunscreen does a pretty good job of acting as a primer. Uh, I do use primer in the evenings though. So when I did the always video, it's typically in the evening when I don't have sunscreen on or for videos when I'm not wearing SPF. But when I go out of the house, I'm wearing SPF. So I'm actually gonna apply this all over my face. The other thing is I'm going to just apply to half my face. So every single day I'm wearing some level of SPF. So I'll wear this Tatcha SPF um, with makeup during the day because it's really nice on the skin. Or if I'm going with Even Up product by Color Science, that is so heavy duty, that is my makeup. So I'll just go over it with powder at that point. I love SPF, I would not go outside without it. Even with a hat, I would still wear SPF. Let me just go ahead and put some base on. What do I have around here? Let me see. For base, let's go lightweight. Let's go with the Chantecaille Future Skin. So those of you who are on the same wavelength as me in terms of very little to no foundation. This is one of those foundations that's like as close to no foundation as I'm gonna get. So this is a shade cream. Gonna go ahead and do my concealer and I'll be right back for the next tip. I've just gone in with Clay de Peau right here, this concealer on my dark spots in the outer corners as well as the rose glow under the eye with the complexion touch by Chanel right under here and then the La Prairie on both sides this time. But I left this because I don't really, I feel like I don't really talk about that. So I have broken capillaries here and it has been worse I think in the past because it kind of looked like I had a bloody nose. That's how visible they were. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like for me to add concealer on this side, but not on this side. So I always do this, but I think I go really fast over this because I don't think it's that exciting of a step, but I think it's really critical in terms of the way everything looks. And I also take it around my mouth like this. So you can definitely see all those broken capillaries there. So if I want a really nice eyeshadow application, I will add a primer. So I'm gonna add primer this just to the side You'll see there is a darkness to my eyelid when I don't prime. Um, and then it just doesn't look right here. It's like there's something off. And then let's go ahead and add bronzer. Just bronzing really quick. Just using the Chanel a number 392 Refer 04 brush. I'm gonna bronze on both sides. This next one is something you see me do all the time. I take the, I've got a new one here, Perfect Blur Powder and I stamp it in the middle of my face, just like this. And then right up here on my brows as well. And that's the only place I really typically apply powder is in the middle, big difference. That's why I powder because there's like a, not a funny, but there's like a way that my face reflects the light right here. That's an interesting, I don't know, shape. So that's why I powder that. We're gonna do brows. So what I never do is I never start 
from the beginning of the brow with a brow powder, any kind of like product that has more like a gel or something like that, because I like to take the, the most amount and apply it towards arch. And then as I go towards the center, it's less amount of product. So it's going to be a little bit softer. So starting at the center, this is my way I typically do my brows and then just kind of seeing how much is being deposited and then I'll go towards the front as I see that there's less and less product and get a much softer kind of application just like that really fast now I never start at the beginning so if I take this product and I start at the beginning and I make a line like this. Do you see what's happening? Um, it is too heavy in the front. And then it just, it's too much. This is going to be hard to recover from. I'm not sure I'm going to even this out. But we'll try. <laughs> I'll still try to make a nice shape. But um, this is what happens when I take all of my brow powder and add it to the front. That's the difference. It's the same product, totally different outcome based on the application. So, I mean, that was a bit of an exaggeration. Now that one took me a little while to figure out myself, um, but over time I realized, and I think maybe I learned this along the way from other videos I'd seen, was to start at the arch and then build. Now, the next thing I never do is I never start my eyeliner on top of my, on the top lash line from the center. I always start it from the middle because of the shape of my eye. I think it depends on the shape of your eye. I have a rounder shape, but it can tend to droop and I want it more upturned, like more of an almond shape. And I think the interior of my eye is actually shaped that way, but the exterior is not. So I'm going to do the side how I normally do it. So starting at the center and then not adding any eyeliner here but starting here and then building out, like that's even a little high, and then building out and doing that little flick. We're gonna do a some work here first. Oh yeah, that was another way I wanted to count. I never skip smudging this out. Like I don't leave my eyeshadow there, eyeshadow, eyeliner. I always smudge it because it's a much softer line and it's a lot more forgiving if I, I mean, this is difficult to get perfect like this. So going in with a, oh, I love this new, um, I can use this smudge brush by BK Beauty. It's 204. I can smudge that out. So either smudge it with my finger or smudge it here. And then I also love this brush by BK Beauty, 208. It's this little eyeliner brush and it just helps to make that more tapered. So there it is starting at the middle with a little wing. It's actually going down a little bit, but I'll fix that in a little bit. Now I'm going to start in the center here. This is how I never do my eye makeup. I may have done this before when I was just starting, but starting from the center and then making a uniform line across. I'll show you what happens. Even if I do a flick at the end, let's do a flick. Just make it more even and let's not smudge it. There's a difference. It's just really heavy and I think it, I don't know, doesn't do much for my eye shape. We'll go ahead with makeup on top of that just so we can see what that looks like. Yeah, this one's gonna be much harder to clean up here. It's a lot harder to control without smudging it. So it's a lot heavier looking also. Yeah, not my style, but some people really like more of a graphic eyeliner like that. Oh yeah, I forgot to do brow gel. I wanted an excuse to use this palette. This is the Black Jaguar Eye Quartet because I think it's so pretty. I thought we could take the blue shadow. That might be fun. This BK Beauty 203 and the blue. I just wanted to go in with a blue and put it on the lid because I think it's so pretty. I just want to see what it looks like. Do have some intermittent shimmer there. Let's go in the crease. I'm gonna take this brush by Rowan. I'm gonna take this brown shade in the crease. Oh yeah, I never skip mascara. Let's use this Tower 28 mascara. It's really lovely. So I'm gonna show you um, why I never skip mascara. 
So there's mascara. That's why I never skip mascara. Skip mascara. Let me finish up the bottom part of the eye. Um, just take a little bit of a little bit of the black on both sides. And let's take that smudger brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of the blue. Let's take the Valentino number four. I haven't really played with that as much as I wanted to. So I'm gonna take a blush brush. Let's take it with a rougher number five. And I always apply it right up to the front of my face. Because it's more cohesive, especially since I have um, concealer here. Otherwise it looks off. It, I mean, it works really well on some people just to dust it there, but for me, especially because it, my concealer stops and starts here, I need to make it more cohesive. So I always will connect the front to the side of my blush. So here it is. We'll use the same blush on this side. I'll just go like this. And just stop. and not bring it up to the concealer. I never skip powder in the front of my face. I'm gonna add this other powder, it's so lovely, the Lotus Perfect Blur Powder. Pick up a little bit with that as well. Just go on the front. Ooh, that also I don't do that. I don't usually put that much blush. That kind of escaped me, hold on. Okay, another thing I never do is I never add sparkly things to the front of my face. So I'm gonna add this, which was my, one of my most disappointing products of the year. Oh, maybe that's a good video, most disappointing products of the year. Um, 202 in Golden Galaxy by Clay de Poe because it's got some detectable shimmer, but I'm gonna use it as a highlighter today. Just right here. So it's got sparkles in it. Now, one thing I never do is I never add sparkle to the front of my face because it emphasizes texture. So let's just do that because everything's looking so amazing right now. Okay, so it's not as bad, but I can definitely see texture from here versus here. That's why I only will put highlight on the top of my cheekbone very, very lightly. But you can see that's why I don't put sparkly things in the front of my face. And then lastly, I never skip a lip. Whether it's uh, just like a light shade or a bold shade, I never feel like my makeup is complete until I add a lip. So let's find a lip. I found this lip. I was wondering what happened to it. It's number 822. It's one of the Chanel Rouge Allure Lustre. Okay, so now that we are here, we have to fix some things. So starting with the brows, I think that's gonna be one of the hardest things. So let me just remove what I can, and that'll just show you how much this powder stays in place. So I'm just gonna try and take off as much as I can with this Q-tip. This might be really hard to even up, but I'll try. Concealer, I think, might help. Let's add a little gel, it's looking better. Okay, let's fix this lip because that's gonna be easy. Okay, lipstick is evened out better. Um, let's take another Q-tip. Q-tips come in really handy. Let's see if we can remove some of the eyeliner at least. I can't go in and do the um, primer now, though it's too late. And then let's smudge that out. As you see without the primer too, it's a different um, color on the eye. It's not the same intensity. Okay, then let's add mascara. Okay, now we've got to work on this face. Now, I don't know, I don't know how easy this is gonna to be to fix this part. Let's go in with the blur powder. Let's see how powerful it is. Going in with the Perfect Blur by Chantecai. Oh wait, we forgot to um, cover that up, my broken capillaries. And I don't know what happened to my brush. Okay, that's really hard to cover up, but let's keep going with the blush, number four. Yeah, definitely a glow. Let's go in with the blur powder again. Plus I went a little overboard on that blush. Yeah, that was a little harder to fix than it was the last time I did this. Just to recap here, I never skip SPF during the day. Always, always SPF. 
every single day. I never line my eyes from the inner corner. I always start from the middle and go out and make a little wing. You could see the difference that it made in my eye shape. Because I have so little real estate there, that's another reason I start in the middle there because, I thought I had something in my hand, um, because otherwise there's no room for any shadow. I never add shimmery products to the center of my face because it emphasizes texture, but I think if you have beautiful, beautiful skin, I definitely think you can do that, but I personally don't. There's enlarged pores there. I don't need to see them that clearly. That's why I love that blur powder, perfect blur powder. I never stop my blush here. I always take it to the front to make that more cohesive because I have concealer there. So I like to connect the two so it looks more harmonious. Otherwise, I think the concealer is more visible, so that's why I do that. I use an eye primer when I really wanna have some control of the shadows on my eyes and have it really consistent. Um, so it was a little unpredictable over here with the eyeshadow, the application without the primer. I never start my brow at the beginning. Like I said, I used to when I started doing my brows and I realized that that was not the effect I was going for. So starting in the center, um, getting some of that product off whatever it is you're applying it with so that when I go to the center, it's not as much, it's not as heavy. So it doesn't look as severe. Um, I never forget to conceal my broken capillaries because as you could see, there's just a redness there. And I always do that and I never really talk about it because I just go here. In fact, when I was doing my concealer, I almost took the concealer all the way across because that's what I always do and only even I don't even think about it, it's just what I do. Plus, I had hyperpigmentation here before, right on my upper lip, and that is something I was used to covering up as well. So I just put concealer over here on my whole upper lip, but now I don't need it as much. So it's mostly broken capillaries. I never skip mascara, so you can see the big difference mascara makes. If I only had one eye product, it probably would be mascara because it makes a huge, huge difference. And then I never skip putting something on my lips. Um, so I will always put a lip color on. I also forgot to mention, that was like a one I threw in there, is that I smudge the eyeliner out because without doing that, it's not as soft on me. And I'm not as precise with the pencil as I would like to be, so I definitely massage it to a place where I want the shape to look in terms of the direction it's going and the softness. So those are 10 things I never do tell my makeup look better. So let me know what some of those things are that you never do when you apply makeup or things you always do because I appreciate you leaving comments in the comment section below on the last video. And there was one, oh, there was one that one of you mentioned that I always do as well, but maybe we'll do another one after this and then we'll compare notes and see if there are some things I'm forgetting about. Or I'll try some of the things that you leave in the comment section below and then um, I can test them out. So please let me know. But that's it for today's video, so please take care of each other, stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.